ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all you YouTubers and viewers and my subscribers out there. Hotel Echo, Lima, Lima, Oscar. Good morning from London, England. Or should I say good afternoon, good evening, or in some cases, good night and rest well. Over here in London, England, it's Christmas Day. Um, it's, a, it's a day for family and friends um, to gather around together. Two o'clock, um, I'll be at my sister's, so I won't be doing any um, videos at all. But before I get started on um, the preview of um, Norwich City v Arsenal, smash the thumbs up like button for me. Yeah? On Christmas Day. Make sure you share this channel virally all over the globe. And I'm talking about sharing it to your friends and your relatives. Make sure they get it and tell them to share it amongst their friends and relatives. Positive feedback in the comment section below, which means your opinions, any messages, etc. Drop it in the comment section below. And last but not least, the colour of that button that begins with, well, with this colour. Yeah, same. the subscribe button is the same as this colour, should I say. Get subscribing, yeah? Left, right and centre and passionately. Let's get up to more than 200 subscribers now that I've have what I need. Just before Christmas, 200 subscribers. If you, if you do so, I will subscribe if you smash that button for me, yeah? Keep it smashed. Please subscribe to DLG Repping. So, <clears throat> Norwich City v Arsenal. I believe it's a three o'clock kickoff. Yeah, it is a three o'clock kickoff because two days later we have Wolves. And um, on Sunday, I'll be doing my preview for that game. So, yes, Norwich City. They're a football team who have obviously been everybody's favourite team to play with the greatest of respect to the football club and the supporters. They are bottom of the league and... Sadly, they're there for a reason and the table never lies. However, since sacking Daniel Furka, and I think it was the right decision at the time, Norwich have this um, little bit of um, flair about them, this confidence. And I saw um, glimpses of that in abundance against Manchester United. I think, I think from viewing the game, they should have buried Manchester United. They had a number of opportunities to bury Manchester United. If their hair was not on goal or on form, they beat Manchester United. Because um, they haven't scored in the last three games, that will be a concern. And they're up against an Arsenal side who are playing with fluent confidence, complete togetherness and um, an improving team all round and you can see in some of their performances they've been um, scintillating putting leads to the sword at Ellen Road and the damage was done the game was won in the first half because of that performance alone with Arsenal if they put up a similar performance against Norwich it would be overwhelming and um, well I don't know what other word I could use. It'll be overwhelming and pleasing, I, I guess. But <clears throat> we have the in tendency, we have the tendency to take our foot off the gas. And I don't want to see that. What they need, what they need is to be reminded that football is a 90 minutes game. They are highly paid professional footballers. You do your job. For 90 minutes. You do your job when you're training. For 90 minutes of football. So you do your job. Within 90 minutes. Especially when the job. Is going for you. You're winning comfortably. 3-0 at half time. Continue to do your job. Don't sit back. As if you feel sorry for the opponent. No. You do your job. So. Um, with us, 
dare I say it, I think we are going in as favourites. Norwich are overwhelming, massive underdogs. And um, this is what will concern me. Norwich could put in a massive underdog um, performance and that's to be expected. However, I'm expecting us to get the three points by hook or by crook. So allow me to pick the starting eleven. There's nine substitutions and the formation. So the formation to start off with is a 4-4-1-1. The formation that has helped us improve our positioning in the table, improved in our performances. And it's worked for the 11 players that we've picked in that time since the, since the first three games of the new season. So um, in goal... A candidate to be a future England number one goalkeeper. A candidate to be Arsenal player of this season. Aaron Ramsdale. I'm sure he's going to get plenty of yard food um, today on this festive um, holiday period. But jokes aside, he's been absolutely scintillating. He's form. He saves. He's behind the reasons why we've been keeping clean sheets. And... I don't see why um, he won't start this game. Right, the back four in this 4-4-1-1 formation. Takahiro Tomiyasu. I would love to say uh, Merry Christmas in um, Japanese. But then again, I can ask my friend to um, teach me because his partner or his missus is Japanese. So I might um, get some lessons there. But Mr. Tomiyasu, you have been excellent throughout this season, since you came in after the three league defeats, you've helped our defence been you've helped our defence to look formidably tough to beat. You've been incredibly gifted in your performances. And um may you continue at right back, depending that you're not injured. I think you got taken off for precautionary reasons. So I expect you to start this game. But then again, if not this game, you may start the Wolves game. I'll understand if Cedric Suarez came in for you. But Takahiro um, Tomiyasu starts. My centre-half pairing, Benjamin White. Now, the first couple of games, very shaky and nervous. But since um, the Norwich game, he has grown from strength to strength to strength. Yes, one stupid moment in the Leeds game, which he will look back on with regrets because he cost us a clean sheet. We were meant to have a clean sheet. Leeds were never meant to have that ball bulging in the back of the net, but bulging from a penalty, it, it did. And Benjamin White has to look at that performance. Well, not the performance as such. He wasn't too bad, but he has to look at that stupid moment and do some real serious researching and thinking but other than that he has been a colossus at the back and for me um another candidate to be Arsenal captain and I've said it on the fan cam and I'll say it on my channel I don't see why he can't be as good as John Terry if not the next John Terry Benjamin White starts. He's partner in crime. The only centre-half in the Premier League that will punch a man in his face while coming into his house with a baseball bat. No, 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 no. Let me rephrase that again. He will punch a pussy hole in his face for the simple fact that he come to his yard to try and rob him while holding a baseball bat. And he thought he was bad. But he's a frigging pussy hole. Abdurama, whatever your name is. You're a pussy hole. Yes, I'm saying that on the behalf of Gabriel Dos Santos Magalis. You start this game. Merry Christmas to you and um, your new family to come as well. For me, you're going to be a world-class centre-half. If not the best, you're going to be one of the best in the world. I see everything in your game. Pace, strength, aggression, power. You've got everything in your game. And for me this season and last season... Terrific. You have been more than terrific. I mean, I don't know 
what other praising words I could use for you. I've run out of them. But for me, you have been um, the rock at our back end. We've been crying out for someone like you. What can I say? You're, you will start the game against um, Norwich City. And another candidate for the armband. Oh, and not to forget Aaron Ramsdale as well. Left back, possibly the favourite to get the armband in the new season, Kieran Tierney. Direct, quick, solid defensively. Um, positioned, position-wise, always in the um, right spot to defend. Always prepared to defend. And offensively, we know how dangerous Kieran Tierney can be. And a good left foot, cultured one. For me, um, our favourite to be the next club captain after um, you know who. Right, the midfield four. He wants to play. Um, all this nonsense talk about burnout this, burnout that. He's a frigging professional footballer. Paid thousands of pounds per week. It's his livelihood. Why would he want to complain? Jordan Henderson, you should take a um, leaf out of some of these professionals, some of these professional footballers' books. But for me, um, Makai Osaka, you'll start this game for me. I can't, I've got to have you on the wing. Unless there's a change of plan, then it's Nicola Pepe. But I'm going to go with you. Well, the last game, he wasn't... Um, at his best, but he's still effective, still got a goal. And um, if he adds more goals to his game, along with his um, blossoming performances, he would be oh, out of this league, out of this planet. And I think he's a, he's a world club, sorry, a world class player in the making. He's still only 20 rival fans. That's what you've got to know. And he's going to be at Arsenal for the long term. You remember DLG said it, yeah? Remember, repping, short for DLG repping. I said that Bakayo Saka will be at Arsenal for the long haul. Get used to it. Right, in the middle of the midfield. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Thomas Partey. He's starting to show, uh, he's starting to show me signs of um, good form. Uh, he's passing. Has never been in question. And um, tenacity. And of course... Um, his intensity has never been in question at all. For me, he's um, got an important job in that midfield to sit in front of that back four. So, Thomas Partey starts the game for me. Alongside him, you know what? I didn't think I'd ever say his name after what he did against Crystal Palace. Although, he was provoked and I can tell you Totally understand why he would have said what he said. Because certain things that were said should not be said in football. That is not a footballing thing. And I can understand why he reacted, but he should have been more professional at the time. But for me, he's come on leaps and bounds. And he's, you know what, he's been quite important to the team. Granit Xhaka, he starts this game. I think he outperformed Partey in the Leeds game in the performance um, department. And that's saying a lot. He out, he's, he's been outperforming Thomas Partey in the last couple of games or more. And Partey is regarded as one of the best in the world at what he does. So that says a lot for Greenwich Shaka. Yes, I get he's not the most mobile. But for me, he gets, a, he gets around the, the pitch. He knows his way around the pitch. He's um, prepared to sacrifice himself for the team. All but stop doing dumb things like stamping on Rafinha's leg. He will do that. There was always a stupid moment with Granite Shaka. But other than that, I've got no problem starting him. On the other wing, wow, our exciting Brazilian. From the streets of Favelas. I labelled him a street fighter on the fan cam. And the way he opposes himself in every football match since he's 
since his childhood, this guy has to start as long as he's um, prepared to produce the goods. And he's producing the goods. Goals, his directness, his pace, his um, intensity for the team defensively as well as offensively for me. There's no way I could drop this guy. I can't see any reason why he can be dropped. And I can't understand why this guy was not part of the reckoning at the beginning of the season. I can't understand it. Gabriel Martinelli, cement your team, uh, cement your place in the team. Right, um, the, the man who's going to play the number 10 role. I'll tell you what, due to merit and due to um, the recent performances, I'm going to continue with Martin Odegaard. He is that number 10. He is that talent. It's getting it out of him week in, week out. And if you get a coach to work directly with this guy, we have got a top class number 10 forward player at the club. And I'll tell you that for free. Get Dennis Burkamp to be his coach. Problem solved. Martin Odegaard will start the game for me. Just look at his pass against um, Leeds. To set up Emil Smith-Rowe. And I love Smith-Rowe. And I can't find a place for him. And the number nine role won't go to Mr. Smith-Rowe. It will go to Lacazette. For me, he gives that team um, that extra... I think he gives it an extra flavour. You can feel that vibe when he's up top. He holds the ball well. He holds the ball up well. He brings others into play. And he is a goal threat. He should have had two goals against Leeds. Simple as. Man of his ability, goal scoring ability and talent. He should be scoring two goals against Leeds um, last game out. But anyway, it matters. He helps the team. And that's what we need. Especially the young players. You can see the young players are responding to him. And give him the armband until the end of the season. I would be for that. I wouldn't, ha I wouldn't, ha I wouldn't be against it. So Alexander Lacazette, yeah, he starts the game. My nine substitutions. Wow. Um, Bird Leno, back um, in, well, back in contention. Couldn't do anything about the Sunderland goal. I might be a little bit critical and say he maybe he could have stood up to the last second, but there was nothing much he can do about that. That was a defence uh, meta. However, he's still got fighting to do. He's on the bench. Cedric Suarez, good, very good game against Sunderland. Um, I like the way um, he um, teed up Pepe um, in midweek. For me, I've got no problems with that guy starting on the bench. Takahiro Tomiyasu, you know how I, you know where I stand with him. And with Suarez, he's got to still do a lot to do. He's got a lot to do to get onto the bench. My substitute number three, if he's back from COVID, Callum Chambers. Um. His versatility is always important for the team. For me, um, he's unlucky not to get into the first team, but that's due to the um, successful partnership of Benjamin White and Gabriel Dos Santos Magueles. But for me, every time he puts on a shirt for the Arsenal, he does a good job and he puts in a good shift. Substitute number four. Ooh. Oh, Nuno Tavares. How can I forget about him? For me, he is a raw talent, but for, but he needs to be coached. He needs um, certain negative um, things in his game to be coached. And if a coach can help him get at the... Um, weak, well, help him with his weaknesses as well as the strengths, we've got a hell of a left back to be proud of. However, he starts on the bench for me. Um, substitute number five... Emil Smith Rowe. I would have um, loved to have started him in this game. Him and Saka have that quality um, link up play and understanding. However, um, 
And because of the form of Martin Odegaard, I think that's the reason why he's starting games. Substitute number six. Martin, no, sorry. Substitute number six, Nicola Pepe. He was terrific. He was terrific um, during the week. He had panache about him, taking players on. He had so much fun. He not make the same player two or three times. <laughs> the cheek of the guy. Um, he hasn't done enough for me to um, play in this game, so he's on my bench. Um, substitute number seven. Oh, substitute number seven. We've got a number of players in there. Albert Sambi, Albert and Boyo Sambi Lokonga. Um, he's done well when he's um asked to play in the first team. I don't know why he's um <clears throat> not featured. Well, and then again, I do know why because the form of Shaka and the performance of Shaka and Thomas Partey showing signs of um, form. I think. It's asking a lot to get him into the team. But don't get me wrong, the talent is there. And um, he will be a fixture in our team for years to come. But I'm going to have him on the bench for this game. Substitute number eight, Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Now, for me, the guy can operate in a number of positions. Right back, midfield, even at left back. But I would um, prefer him at, in the midfield role. But for me, I'm only going with uh, yeah. I'm having them, I'm having them on the bench because I think I've got the right pairing in the midfield. If anything, make the Nas officers a lot of legs and fitness around that pitch. I get that he's a lot more mobile than Greenwich Shaka. I get that. But with the Norwich game coming with well, with the Norwich game, I'm gonna go with um Shaka and Partey. Where Shaq if Partey does go forward, Shaka will cover for him. And like and vice versa. So yeah, it's an interesting um decision for me, but I'm gonna go with um make the Niles on the bench. Following Balogun on the bench for me. He he might have played on the wing. Eddie and Ketia might have got um, the praise for their hat trick, but I'll say it again. I'll I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and I'll keep saying it again. Balogun, I find he's more superior and talented than Eddie and Ketia. He will be a Premier League fixture for Arsenal in years to come. Possibly, he might need to go out on loan, but from now, I'll have him on my bench. So that's um, the end of my um, preview. That which includes the starting eleven and the substitutions and the formation is a four four one one. So, ladies, gentlemen, to the boys, to the girls, allow me to thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Also, saving the best to last, as I always say. Thank you so much for putting up with me and my Christmas hat. Ho ho ho! Um, I'll be back um, tomorrow. Yeah, with um, the team news and giving you my um, analysis on the team news. And um, I should be back with another video on top of that as well. So until then, what was I going to say? <laughs> take care of your friends, take care of your families, take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful Christmas and an enjoyable new year and take care of you. Yeah. And, um, be safe and, um, try and get vaccinated because, um, this COVID situation is not getting any better. So do the right thing until then. Peace again, love again, and bless again. Eat, drink, and don't um, drive when you're drunk until next time. DLG Repping, we'll talk again. Just please be merry.